Fifth, 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 fifth. Fa, 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 fi, <laughs> Okay. Hello and welcome to the 55th episode, 55 episodes of Growing Up Geek, the weekly podcast for geek entertainment and nostalgia. My name is Brad and I'm joined by my brother, Rob. Ik, nick, nick, dick, 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 dick. Uh huh. All right. What's up, man? Not much. For, and everybody catches that reference. The Da 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 song from the Volkswagen commercial <laughs> has a little yeah. German poem that just goes, I don't like you, you don't like I. And it's ich, nick, dick, 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 dick. That's the best. Oh, I need a drink of milk after that. <laughs> I know. Jeez, well, right. I haven't talked to you in a little while. How was your new year? Happy New Year. Um, The new year is going well. On a percentage rate, it's better <coughs> than last year by leaps and bounds. Well, your house hasn't burned down. Exactly. That hasn't happened. Uh, That's already a plus. Watching Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve. Yeah, he was a little less rocking this year than usual. Uh, oh. I guess thanks to the stroke. But he did this thing where he was saying, I right, want everybody to have a happy new year. And then it went to Ryan Seacrest. He was like, you said it, boss. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the torch has been passed to him, and he will soon be the uh, unaging face of, of New Year's for as yeah. long as, as they And, and I feel kind of bad because we all made those jokes about, no, Dick Clark's a robot. Dick Clark's never going to grow old. <laughs> he still you know? looks like a robot, though. I swear he was animatronic. Well, he still looks His young. teeth were perfectly white cubes. <laughs> You know? <laughs> exactly. So your New Year's going okay. New Year's was good. Christmas was good. I don't even think I was around for Christmas. Um, I know. We, we didn't get to get together. I got you the Fallout 3 strategy guide. Fallout 3, thank you very much. No problem. Uh, I got you nothing because we did a grab bag. and so That's okay. Uh, but uh, one of the neat things I did get was the 8-bit uh, tie. I heard about this. On our uh, on our Christmas episode, and I actually I didn't realize, but my girlfriend was listening, and she was like, "I, I will get that tie, and it's very nice. <laughs> That's great. I wear it. I strut around the floor at you know the place I work, and just people comment on it. it's nice. That's awesome. Yeah, that last question, key question: Are your lights still up? Yes, and my tree's still up. So is ours. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna ride it out. I think uh, 2009, it's gonna have a tree. Yeah, I, I was talking to a friend who said they they traditionally keep the tree up until valentine's day and i'm like holy cow because like i and i even told her I, I was like i'm putting the lights on and i don't really care if anybody thinks it's weird i just there's something great about christmas lights yeah and you put a lot of effort into it whatever as long as it's winter you should have a tree <laughs> there you go trees grow deal with it uh let's yeah. get into the geek news then let's let's move yes. on uh, from our lives here into the geeky news. Each week we like to select one favorite geek news story. This week, Rob, what was your favorite? Um, interesting news. My favorite news, I guess. <laughs> it's coming from Apple. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we got had a keynote, right? Keynotes and, and various other news flying out at you. And all of it is kind of like a mixed bag. Like, take this for what it is. But uh, sure. we have Steve Jobs, right? We do. And he... There was sort of good news, I guess, but it came out that he's been getting thinner because he has a hormone imbalance. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, so it's not the cancers. Uh, oh, okay. It's, that's it's always actually good. Um, the proteins in his body aren't absorbing right. So it's like, yay, that's good, but he's sick, so that's <laughs> bad. Just read, yeah, in a way, yeah. it's like it's the only time that would be a compliment. It's like, oh, I'm th- getting thinner from a hormone dysfunction. Normally people go, oh, Lord. But it's yeah. like, oh, that's great news. <laughs> Stock prices actually took a little spike from that. That um, is weird. The only time you can announce your hormones are out of whack and the right. stock goes up. That because, is weird. Because it shows that he's still you know, on board, and, and that was kind of scaring yes. investors. Now, uh, right. the actual news, though, that came out of Apple was... Oh, that wasn't the news. Okay. ...was largely regarding iTunes. And um, <clears throat> yes. they're, they're doing some new stuff. And a lot of this has to do now with variable pricing. Okay, lay it on me, lay it on me. Remember back in the day what the big appeal of iTunes was? 99 cents for every song. Yeah. So now, actually, they've changed it. And they're like, oh, well, now premium songs are going to be a buck twenty-nine, And right. lesser known, lesser downloaded songs are going to be... You know, like 69 cents. There's like a 30 cent ah. difference up or down. Like the new Killers album may be like, you know, more expensive because it's newer and more demand. Right. And I personally, I hated that. Back in the day with with Music Match and the, the yeah. stuff that came out before iTunes, right, I hated sliding. 
the sliding thing. I'd be like, oh, what, what is this? Okay, well, I'm not buying that. And, yeah. well, I guess I will buy this because it's cheaper. And Yeah, it, you know, not to you know, just take the obvious approach, but I'm gravitating so far away from iTunes and decisions like this yeah. don't help me to come back. Not at you all. Know, I mean, obviously, if I, was, if I was tied to an Apple product, which is really the key here and the unspoken thing is that Apple can do whatever Apple wants as long as Apple wants as long as people support it because there is a market there mm-hmm. they're kind of weird decision to not embrace blu-ray because as steve jobs put it it's a quote ball of hurt you know the licensing stuff they didn't want to get involved in like they must be doing pretty good if they can do this because right. nobody else is pulling this and amazon is like five dollars a cd sometimes disgustingly cheap there's like a cd on there for like three dollars right yeah, rhapsody as well is 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 just such a much better option in my opinion yeah. it's like okay um yeah there there's the subscription option yeah. and i want to make that clear because everybody always acts like you're forced into doing the subscription thing right no and, but and like, you can buy the songs if you want but or and or you can buy the songs yeah. and you get mp3s just like amazon i'm like why doesn't like <laughs> iTunes always yeah. acts like with its subscription thing that it can't do it because it's like oh well we don't want to burden our customers with that you know or we feel like they they wouldn't like that it's like well give them the option and if they don't like it, don't do it. Yeah. And otherwise, just they'll continue buying it like regularly. It reminds me of the stare down, the awkward stare down that I had with a CompUSA employee. <laughs> I went in to buy a Rhapsody compatible player, and he goes, "Why don't you just buy an iPod?" I was like, "Well, I want to use Rhapsody, and uh, it doesn't work with the iPod." But you know, do you have any players? And he's like, "Well, Rhapsody, what's so good about that?" You use iTunes. I'm like, well, it's fifteen dollars for millions of songs. Like, I mean, I was really like trying not to sound offensive, but but he kept pushing me, and and he was like, yeah, but you can't keep that music. So that was like all the stock answers, you know. It's like, well, you can buy it if you want to, but t- get out of my face and give me an MP3 player. Right. Like, it was really weird, like aggressive. I know you guys don't do that where you work, but we got to move on. Uh, yeah. that, that sounds like interesting news that only Apple can do. You know, exactly. So thank you for that. We're glad to hear Steve Jobs is okay. Mm-hmm. On the upside, um, my favorite news story this week actually is a sad one, and uh, so I'm gonna have to bring the tone down a little bit. Mm-hmm. From angry to sad, <laughs> what a great intro! Um, EGM is canned. EGM is done. Ouch! This uh, this morning, the news stories went up all across the internet about EGM magazine closing following One Up's sale to UGO. You know, there was a lost podcast that we did, uh, a lost nostalgia section that got cut off for technical reasons about magazines. I figured this is a good place to vent those memories of video game magazines. This, to me, it feels like a nail in the coffin, you know, if there was one, because EGM's been one of the long, you know, you could always say, well, EGM's still around somehow. Right. Yeah, I mean, magazines have, have been losing their necessity ever since the internet, you know, get, got you know caught fire. I guess I'll say it this way. Is there still something you would rather read a magazine for? Absolutely. I mean, well, this is the same issue they've been talking about with with publications like any magazine is just now what you they need to do is specialize in articles, interesting in-depth coverage, not the stuff that you would normally get in the quick quips that are right. on the internet, you know, and only up for a day before replaced with something else, but something that you can really kind of just mull over and and really get like, you know, interesting takes on. So that's where you want to go for, say, your your interviews, insider information uh, for the yeah. industry. I mean, it's not for screenshots anymore. That's for exactly. darn sure. And video content. I mean, everything's video content now. Right. Trailers right. of games, the second that the press sees them, we're seeing them streamed live. Right. But, uh, you know, like, like I said, anything else, anybody else wants to keep their head out of the water, they have to have the magazine represent something more than, than just news. It has to right. be the articles. It has to be editorials. Stuff that breaks down the the world of Warcraft, the economics of that, or like how to make the best character, or, or like you know interviews with the creators of Fallout Three after the fact about you know what's going on. A, a lot of right. aftermath material, not so much you know unveilings. Stuff for the true enthusiasts, right? You know, right. He's gonna eat that up. But anyway, I just you know we just gotta pour one out for EGM because. Geez, so much of our video game knowledge came through that magazine. Yeah. And it's going to be sad to see them go, you know? Like, yeah. there's stacks and stacks of those things. You know, there there was in my garage before I moved. And, you know, I would flip through those and be like, dang, man, th- those days have sailed. 
Indeed. You know, and I still remember the issue of Game Pro that had <laughs> the PlayStation One controller in a preview mode, and it was like, you know, apparently Sony thinks we have more than ten fingers. You know, they were like <laughs> knocking how many buttons there were. You know, which is now standard. You know, right? Uh, looking back at all that old stuff, it's really interesting. Like hindsight, you know. Yeah. Well, we salute EGM for uh, for what it represents. It's sad that the magazine, kind of as an icon of the industry, has passed. So here's hoping that things go well with UGO, but yeah, it's it's sad. Yeah, and UGO I always associate with like you know top babes of the day or whatever. So oh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if that's a one up for one up. But <laughs> speaking of video games, let's move to our main topic of discussion. Yes, which this week I am so excited for. Long time waiting for this. Game of the Year. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about 2008's Game of the Year. And, uh, you know, you and I have a big tradition of watching Game of the Year awards. And uh-huh. for a long time, that was, you know, GameSpot. And, you know, with what happened with Jeff Gersman and a lot of their their staff leaving, we kind of drifted away from that site. And I wanted to ask you, did you watch any Internet Sites awards this year? You know, did anybody <laughs> catch your eye? No. I didn't. <laughs> okay. I got to be honest, yeah. That's okay. Honesty is key. I, I want to shout out a few that I have gravitated towards as a possible okay. uh, replacement for GameSpot. Although I will say, GameSpot does a very good job. They're very professional. They have the context of playing every single game. But as far as awards that I trust, I've been really liking Joystick. Mm-hmm. And then, believe it or not, and this is a weird one, game trailers yeah even though it's like this faceless sort of narrator guy that's like this game doesn't have very good graphics and it's like well who are you but i agree with his review a lot of the time whoever he is yeah i thought those were some good sites uh with some strong awards but let's get to ours yes absolutely the the, just the naked uncensored opinions of two dorks on the internet (laughs) we play a lot of games rob what did you think of 2008 real quick you know as compared to last year for gaming wise you know, um, I think it didn't live up quite to 2007 because 2007 mm-hmm. was huge and insane and just like blew everybody away with all the stuff that kept yeah, coming up. But I agree. It was a good year for sequels. Yeah. And a good year for the PS3, actually. You know, there was a lot of exclusives. Well, it, I mean, Little Big Planet, I guess. and Metal Gear. Uh, Metal Gear, although the, the exclusivity of that mail to be temporary. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were wrong about the iPhone thing, but we'll see what happens. Right, and we'll also see the uh, Final Fantasy XIII oh, that, <laughs> getting yeah. uh, sent over to, to 360 was a major coup. Right, exactly. But So 2008 for you, not as strong. I, I certainly agree. Bioshock, Orange Box, I mean, there was just like hit, hit, hit last year. This year, a little tougher to pick. I gotta say, my Game of the Year yeah. picks were difficult. I don't know. How about you? Um... It's somewhat difficult. I mean, I guess I, I just chose between the major games that I played. You know, so I, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to say that I was really stopped. Although there were plenty of games that I wish I could have played. Yeah. I have to say, I learned something about myself this year. You know, we have these, like, revelations sometimes, like, as game players. Yeah. And this year, I'm done with games being hard. I just want to say this. I am done with games <laughs> that punish the player. I am Mr. Valve. Okay? I just want a game to help me have fun. And, I mean, I don't know if that sounds insane or if that sounds like the most normal thing ever, but a lot of times this year I felt like I was out of sync with the review community because I would be really enjoying something like Mercs 2, like the co-op in Mercs 2, is, is just a blast. And then I would hear, no, I'm sorry, that you're, you can't like that game. You know, it, it, it's a 5.0 or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, well, what about the just the fun and then something like Grand Theft Auto 4, which, you know, was a huge game that got so many awards, a lot of time that felt to me like a, like a job, you know, like the save system that forces you to restart across town, not from the mission, but from the place that queues up the mission, you know? It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Find a hot dog vendor in order to, you know, regain your health. Stuff like that, I guess I felt out of sync because I was like, this stuff is hard, dude. This is punishment. This isn't fun. And a lot of people be like, oh, it's the best. It's the best. So, you know, maybe my opinions are going to be out of sync. I don't know. But I'm done with hardness. I want funness. Yeah. And that's my spiel for 2008. <laughs> well, it fits. I, I guess, like, I mean, because a lot of people in the earlier age or, or later ages are just looking for an escape or, or something to just take their minds off of real world problems. And it's like, so yeah. a video game is, is one of the 
the major things that people resort to, but they don't want to like have problems in a game. Yeah, they just want to be like, okay, uh, I'll sit back and let this happen and just have fun and, and feel a sense of accomplishment yeah. for completing this task, you know, and, and things like that. They don't want to be like, you know, oh my gosh, I gotta yeah make sure I keep my guy at number one on the scoreboard. Yeah, and, and you know, and I, and, yeah. I, and of course, this could be you know, I'm the old man. I'm gonna be thirty soon, and it's like. Maybe that's the opinion. That's However, it. I am of the age of most of the Nintendo generation. You know, they're growing up mm-hmm. and they're getting older, and I imagine there's hopefully some more people like me. I think this is probably the reason for the casual market explosion, you know, and yeah. the success of yeah. the Wii. But let's let's move on past that. I want to get into your runner up, your number two right. game of the year. Uh let's just jump right in. What'd you pick? Okay, well, oddly enough, my number two game is Grand Theft Auto 4. No, I uh, knew you were going to say that. I knew yeah. you were going to say that, and, and that's okay. That's okay. You're not alone. Well, okay, well, basically, I'm looking at just things that I couldn't stop playing or, or that just vacated my, my uh, disk drive, <laughs> you know, to the point where it was exactly. just, like, wearing away at the wheel inside there. Um, yeah. Grand Theft Auto 4, I just come, kept coming back to it. I just kept having fun. I wanted mm-hmm. to explore every nook and cranny. I personally um, got used to the driving uh, methods, and uh, I, I did a little trick where I, I found myself always kind of holding the right analog stick slightly down to keep the, the camera angle, yeah. give me a little higher view. You know, which which kind of you know, well, they really should sort of have that adjustable by itself, so they don't have to do that. Right, but you kept coming back to I it. I kept coming back to it. I kept having fun. And if anything, it's for the reasons we discussed that Liberty City is just so unique and alive, and the characters yes. in that game are so fun to interact with. And and I will say that yeah, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Liberty City is a real freaking city. Yeah. I mean, God, you can just walk up to a trash can and be like. They had to put this here, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's maybe a poor example, but the story is great. Liberty City is great. I will never knock those things. Yeah, and so I'm definitely going to say that Grand Theft Auto 4 is definitely one of the best games to come out this year, and so if you haven't mm-hmm. picked it up yet, it's probably at a good price. Get it. It's definitely fun and deserving of tons of acclaim. Um, I really feel like it's it's sort of nitpicking at, at times to as to what's wrong with it. I feel like they smoothed out a lot of the edges that the uh, older games suffered from. And, you know, you you can't deny yourself a good Grand Theft Auto game because there's always something for everybody. There's story for the people who want story. And then there's just random acts of violence for people who want sandbox play. So (laughs) all of this is is good stuff. And I think it tends to be best if you've played the old Grand Theft Auto games and and have seen the evolution of how far it's come. Well, yeah. Now, you know, I think compared to other games now, Mm -hmm. I find it to be lacking. But, you know, I'm not going to knock your opinion. Yeah. This is all about honesty, like I said. that If that is how you felt, man, you couldn't take it out of your drive, then it's right. definitely got to be in there. You know? Okay, so so passing it over to you, Brad. You're, yep. you're runner-up for Game of the Year. Runner-up for Game of the Year for me is actually the most recent game that I've played, and that is Prince of Persia for the oh. Xbox 360. Um, right away, the complaint you hear about this game is that it's not hard. So I go back to my previous statement. You're right. It's not hard. It's fun. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Um, I mean, I can't describe it, obviously. This is not radio theater, you know, but um, some of the scenery in this game is the most beautiful scenery I've seen on the 360. Yeah, I do a thing where I go to a ledge that's extremely high up, and I stand on the very edge, and you can't fall off, you know, uh, or you'd be a dummy too. And, and you look around at this massive, sprawling, beautiful scenery, and Amber gets scared because she's like, oh, don't do that, you're bothering me, because, you know, it's almost like a vertigo thing where it's like I'm so high up. But, dude, I love that. Not since Jack and Daxter have I had so much fun with a platformer for its beauty and for its just, you know, sweeping vistas and things. Um... You will traverse insane landscapes in this game. Upside down, swinging, even flying towards the end. Um, wow. Awesome stuff. Simple controls, uh, much like Miyamoto. You know, it, it teaches you simple controls up front, and you reuse those the whole game, but it's the strategy of the timing. You know, how will I use it? What, what time will I use it? People have said, oh, but all you do is press buttons. Yeah, but it's almost like a rhythm game. You know, it's like make sure you hit it at this time to grab this vine, then hit it at that time to grab that thing. Had a blast playing this game. The reason it's the runner-up is because the boss battles are roughly the same thing you do each time you fight a boss. Um, yeah. So it's not that they're unfun, but they're just not very original. 
Uh-huh. And it took a little while for the game to kind of grow on me, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but I loved just the effortless way that this game just lets you fly around this insane world. Loved it. Um, there's a there's a mechanic in the game where you can you can actually it's optional story. You press a button to talk to Elika, who's your your sidekick. She'll tell you something, and then if you don't want to do that, you don't have to hear the story. Like literally, the story in the game is optional. Wow. Which is awesome, I think. Um, in, in addition to that, a lot has been made about the quick reloads after the after you die, which basically is you jump off of a cliff, she grabs you out of midair and pulls you back up. Loved that. Again, not hard, fun. You you, uh, you fail, but you're put right back on the ledge that you were just on, as opposed to GTA across town in your underwear. Right. Loved it. Prince of Persia. Check it out. That's mine. Cool. Okay. So, your game <laughs> of the year. Game <laughs> of the year. Yay. Um, 2008. I, what was I don't the best think this thing? Is, actually, I don't think this is a very surprising one. I, I, I have a feeling I know what it is, but go ahead. My game of the year, the one that burned a hole in my 360, the one that <laughs> when I thought that maybe I could download a game onto my 360, I tried to download this one on there so that I could just <laughs> have it permanently in there. Exactly. Uh, it was ah uh, the game, Rock Band Two. Interesting. I thought it was gonna be Fallout. I thought it was gonna be I Fallout. Know. I know. Oh, I, I bet you interesting. did. I know no, you're going it's with a, your heart. You're going with your I'm heart. With, this is just. I have to be honest here. Be honest. And I know we gave uh, Rock Band One um, acclaim last year. People are gonna this, get freaking sick of this, but it's awesome. Let me just say they've gone they, beyond what they accomplished with Rock Band One. Um, right. The entire year has been filled with Rock Band 2 for me. Like The constant steady flow of quality tracks to download. Um, I, I'm uh, actually uh, quite addicted to it. I, I, I very yeah. much enjoy <laughs> seeing what comes out and being like, oh, man, I'm getting get this track or something. They, oh, dude, I, yeah. I have to say like the, the No Doubt track pack they released yes. is almost flawless. Like, so there's no doubt about the No Doubt track pack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> to be edited. To be edited out. All right. Continue, um, continue. Th- and just the fun to be had when playing Rock Band is just oh, yeah. not replaceable. You've gotten more people involved in it, and, and just to see them rediscover songs are like, yeah. now the playlist is so huge, I'm actually discovering stuff within it that I'm like, oh, man, we didn't even know we had this song. Who unlocked exactly. This? And, exactly. And we this. just had our... our we had our New Year's party, and a shout out to Jason and Lindsay who came. And uh, you know, thirty minutes into it, she's like, "Honey, we're buying Rock Band too." You know, yeah. it's the, it's the oh, they have that song. It's like oh, word, Coheed's on here. You know, stuff like that. Exactly. Um, that you just go wait thirty seconds to Mars. You know, yeah. I, I, lo- I love people's reaction when they're like, "I can play this now." You know, it's super cool. Absolutely, and the way that they take the Rock Band one library and import that, um, just it, it, it's so much leaps and bounds above what Guitar Hero yeah. ever thought to do. And, I'm afraid uh, to continue mentioning Rock Band on this show for fear there's going to be some punishment. Well, yeah. But, you know, you're being honest. I mean, that's the thing. It, it's just continuing and continuing. That's the game we pull out when friends come over. And if they've never played it before, they find their instrument, and it ends up being a group of 40-year-olds screaming aqua lung. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, Exactly. It's powerful, it's, dude. It's, it's powerful. always it's accessible. It's it's hardcore. It's fun, like you said. Like it, it can be yeah. hard, but it can be fun. It yeah. has it's so much like a uh, pop culture status. Oh, thing. oh, and no fail mode. Yes, no fail. No mode. fail mode is key for you. <laughs> no, no. Well, for, I, for I friends, play on for friends. Yeah, people for that friends, have never played absolutely. before. There's nothing worse than you know. Here, try this new game, and then oh, the whole band fails out, and everybody knows it's because the guitar player. You know. And also unlock all songs from the beginning. Yeah. Go to your friend's house, dial it up, and you have instantly all the songs. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So that's my game of the year. Now, Brad, what is your game of the year? Man, that's still... I so thought it was Fallout. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> Fallout, build the show around Fallout. Fallout is great. Uh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. I almost gave it my runner-up. It's definitely my number three. Yeah. But um, it's, it's maybe a bit too... Uh, Hard? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Obviously, I bought you a strategy guide for it, so that's what's keeping me, you know, nervous the, about. 
the experience of Fallout Three is 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 definitely one uh, that's um, words huh. cannot describe. It can't explain like the, sort of the uh, the task based of feeling when playing it. It's not so much um, crazy fun. Yeah, it's it's a hardcore game, and that's why I guess yeah. like I can't recommend it as easily right. as Grand Theft Auto or Rock Band and, and give it the same acclaim. Awesome. Well, we're not gonna. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into Fallout, but. That is that's awesome. You went with your heart, and that's exactly what I'm about to do. Okay, which is why you're gonna kill me. Oh no! Because my winner <laughs> for game of the year is Condemned to Bloodshot. Wow! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to be honest. Okay. okay. I cannot tell a lie, George <laughs> right. Washington. Full disclosure: you have gray skin in this game. Okay, I know. I know you look like a corpse, as Amber always points out. I know the story is thin and at times very confusing. But dang, I had a great time with Condemned. And when I looked back over my... and You know, I just walked past it for $15 at Blockbuster. I'm like, I don't think people give a crap about this game. But when I look back at my year, I had a blast with this. And kind of like how you measured it in the amount of time it was in your drive, I re-rented Condemned you know, to be able to finish it. Yeah. There's only so many games I can say that about. I, I only got halfway through Dead Space, and I never re-rented it. I don't really have a desire to, and that's going to break some hearts. But, hey, this is me being real. Uh, there is a lot to love about Condemned 2. Just a quick th- few things here. Very high production value, as you saw. Um, the graphics and the sound effects and everything are very good. It, people can go back and listen to our review episode, and I don't want to re- recover a lot of that territory, And I, but you weren't really into it. Um, i got to say, for me... Just such an immersive game, you know. People say, thir- you know, first-person perspective, but in most games, you don't feel kind of you feel kind of floaty. There's a gun in front of you, but you don't really f- you're gliding over the ground. In this game, you are in your character's body, whether you're climbing a ladder or whether you're punching a dude in the face. I mean, your fists literally come out and knock dudes down, and they punch you, and your your view shakes. And um, you look down, there's your feet. You know, you look at a wall with your flashlight. There's your shadow. It connected me with the first-person view in a way others hadn't. I even sat close to the screen at one point and just looked around, and it felt, honest to God, more like looking around a real room, and a horrible room, too, because this game has the worst places to go that you'd ever want to go, and that's the last thing I'll say is the variety in this game. Wow. I know you're sitting silently. I want you to I want you to, <laughs> to bring something at, at me about this because I'll defend it. I mean, like like I said... The levels, there was so much good variety here. We talked yeah. about the crime scene moments. You know, it doesn't just have plowing through waves of hobos. It also has, like, CSI-type moments. Um, you know, we joked that it was CSI bum fights. Yeah. But literally, I mean, it's, you know, you'll be detecting a crime scene with a black light, and then you'll be hitting a guy with the bar that you tore off of a game of uh, foosball, you know? Wow. Um, dingy apartment, doll factory, you know? Greasy ceiling sack, snowy forest, uh, the bear chase. There's so many cool moments in, in Condemned that I really enjoyed. If people are out there, they haven't even heard of this game, which I expect. Um, I I had to do this. It was a very difficult choice between this and Prince of Persia. Which will it be? Which will it be? But as I the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? Shoot, it's Condemned. So there you go. The game on nobody's top ten <laughs> list. Uh, I have not even that seen is- it appear. Yeah, that is an upset if ever there was one. I, I really feel like you're just doing that to get back no, no, to the no. guys who made Tyler Durden the number one on their best characters <laughs> in the movie. Like, get off my porch, Tyler Durden. Exactly. Yeah, no, well, exactly. That, see, now here's the thing. There is. I want to say that something about that because there's a very strong desire when you make a list like this to have the contrary opinion. Everybody likes to have the, ooh, I didn't expect that. But no, I played Gears 2, I played Dead Space, I played a ton of these big AAA titles, I played Grand Theft Auto, obviously. I'm serious. This was the game that I enjoyed the most. And, you know, I know there's at least one other friend I have out there who's, you know, showed me his copy and was like, dude, have you played this? So, I'm throwing that out there. Uh, If you're like me, who knows who that is? (laughs) Uh, Condemned to Bloodshot. Yes, you have gray skin in this game. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, whenever I played it, it did that have the same experience. I, in fact, kind of no. was a little uh, – didn't have as much fun. I mean, like, I thought that the guy was sort of superficial in his You way thought it was doing. basically a bad game, right? Well, I mean, that's the thing. Well, I enjoyed it a bit, and, uh, I mm-hmm. mean, the, the ceiling sacks were cool. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. The uh, – The gee, thanks, but I, but I really – the kind of, like, 
feeling of getting lost in these big places. I know yeah. for a fact, and I'll say this, is that part of my problem with enjoying this game had to deal with the fact yeah. that I had such a short time span to play it and absorb it. I was trying to, to, to look around it and find how to complete the things and not really explore the area. And it, it really right. lent itself well to that. And I, I know that you love that, it's like being able to oh, explore. Dude. So... Um, maybe not so much for me, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take that glory away from you. I think that's a really interesting choice, and it, it's definitely yeah. made me think. Well, maybe I should check it out again. I think you should. I yeah. think you know, not having the stress of having to re, you know review it really quick, which I know you didn't have a lot of time, would help you with that. But uh, it's messed up. I don't like Saw. I don't like torture porn. I don't like any of that stuff. I I, I actually hate that stuff. But yeah. this dang game with its gray-faced alcoholic hero <laughs> who literally has to drink to maintain his I mean that's stupid I mean that's messed up but yeah. oh god if it didn't just put me right in there and you know I lived that life for however long um, <laughs> I don't know nice. I don't know and then I woke All up right. in a pool of my own vomit um, so yeah. let's call it a night for that and actually we gotta wrap this show up here cause we're running kinda long um, yep. real quick I'll just let you tell a nostalgic story do you remember when you used to take a nap to Bob Ross VHS tapes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have just rediscovered my love for Bob Ross. I've been DVRing him. Nice. He's on the, the Create Network as yeah. the best of joy of painting. And I've just been watching it. And I can't believe that you just brought that up because I just. Awesome. Ha. Uh, the man the with man the afro. <laughs> with an afro. Joy he, of painting. If you don't know, it's a guy that you know hosted a painting show. Yes, he is and a he would steel make... wool ball with a smile. <laughs> and, he uh, was. He, he's just he, – he has this method of painting where, like, it's like, okay, um, I see just kind of, like, hazy stuff. And then he's like, he takes a knife and he'll yeah. sweep it across the canvas. And you're like, oh, my goodness, there's a lake there. Yeah, he oh makes lakes it out of nothing. It wasn't there before, and now it's yeah. all I can see. It's awesome, and he, you yeah. know everything's a secret with Bob Ross. And his Family Guy even parodied that. But he, you know, he does this. You know, this waterfall will just be our little secret. You know, yeah. <laughs> or like you know, happy little trees, just let them dance. So calming, and that's why you you napped to this because I remember you VHS him, yeah. and then you would watch. The, now you're DVRing him. I guess technology has changed, right. but Bob right. Ross hasn't. Oh, yeah, God. he's he's been there for a long time, and 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 just. Uh, yeah, and by napped, I understand, gentle listener, that yeah. uh, he's not talking about when I was a kid, although I did when I was a kid. No, no, but this, this is, is college. Yeah, this is college. I'd be I was saying Bob Ross is from our childhood, and you're, and you're still. Yeah, <laughs> between classes, I would, I would put on Bob Ross and just take naps because he was just such a soothing show, you know? <laughs> Combined I love with, that you like, drifted his, off every day. To his some low, waterfall or snowy, you know, whatever. Exactly. It, his bassy voice combined with like the gentle tapping of the oh, brush. Oh yeah, yeah. On the the, the padding of the brush against the thing, <laughs> and you can hear that stuff. And then he would yeah. smack the brush against the thing and go, "Just beat the devil out of it." You know, yeah. he would say <laughs> stuff. There was actually yeah. one one episode. I remember we we actually like cherished this moment, and I think you showed it to me. And he he turns toward the camera and he goes, "Well, somebody's written me a letter saying they've had a lot of disappointments." Well, I, you know, that's the best way to learn. So may your life be plagued with disappointments. <laughs> and he said it in that soothing voice. And I was like, that is an awesome quote. Bob Ross yeah. just said that. Um, anyway, got to end the show here. But I just thought I'd flash this back real quick to, uh, you know, a guy that we grew up geek with and uh, mm-hmm. maintained all the way through those college years, those those tough college years. Absolutely. The, the, he's out on DVD now. You can get like 30 things. It's BobRoss.com oh, or 1-800-BOB-ROSS. It's pretty cool. But, uh, <laughs> that is cool. Look him up. Uh, so look if you grew up. up geek like us and you'd like to leave us a comment or an email, you can do so at our website, which is growing-up-geek.com. And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. Once again, I'm Brad. And I'm a happy little tree. And we'll see you next week.